Thank you, Werner. I am super excited to be here at reInvent this year. I want to talk to you about something super important that impacts all of us, education. Every day, there are 8,300 students in this country that drop out. That's every single day, 8,300 students drop out of school. Remind exists to solve this problem by helping teachers engage students and involve parents in safe and simple communication. And it's working. Today, Remind has over 30 million parents, teachers, and students, and, we're in, and we have active teachers in 50% of K through 12 schools in the US. In fact, I bet that many of you in the audience with kids, their, parent, their teachers are already using Remind. So when we started Remind about four years ago, we recognized that there was a big opportunity to help improve education by, by helping teachers to communicate with parents and students, because that was one of the biggest challenges in the classroom. Believe it or not, many teachers are still using paper and email to communicate. So we needed to make it really easy for teachers to build the network, and we used SMS to do that. SMS also give, makes it easy for people that don't have access to things like smartphones and PCs at home. And because this is a product where teachers are communicating with children, safety is super important. These principles have driven our growth every back to school season for the history of the company. So here's something crazy. We grow out of our minds every year at the beginning of the school year. I saw fast growth when I was at Skype and big numbers, but I've never seen this kind of growth seasonality before. At the beginning of every school year, um, we grow fast. So this year in August, at our peak, we were adding 400,000 new users every day, and we were sending 200 million messages a month. Contrast that to two years ago when we were sending 50 million messages a month. So we experienced pretty, pretty normal growth through the, through the school year. And then, um, you know, and then when, and then when uh, the end of the school year comes, our traffic falls off a cliff when, uh, when they go back to, you know, when they, when they go for summer break. And then one day in August, we know exactly when it is, our traffic shoots up, and it, it, can, it, it often is two times or more the highest level we've ever seen before. This turns out to be a cool application for AWS, because we can't go down, especially during back to school. So how have we been using AWS at Remind? Well, we just, you know, two years ago, we were only using a handful of services. To meet the needs of back to school, we're now using all of these services as well. Part of our evolution as a company has been to move from, from being a monolithic Rails application to, using, uh, to being a distributed set of microservices. One advantage of microservices has been that it allows us to scale horizontally more easily, and it also allows independent teams to release functionality without having to take dependencies on each other. We started our move from monolithic um, to microservices about three years ago, and we successfully ran this on other partners. After making it through back to school last year, we realized that we needed to have more control over our architecture. And so we kicked off a project in January this year called Empire that would be that platform. And we, and we open sourced it in June, um, and it's really taken off. We now have over 1,200 stars on our GitHub repo, and when we announced it, we, we were on page one on Hacker News. So what were the requirements around, around Empire? Well, we wanted to improve our infrastructure security by reducing the attack surface because we're securing children's information. We needed to improve visibility into, um, into the containers and the instances running underneath them. We wanted more flexibility to be able to pick additional kinds of hardware um, and hardware configurations. And lastly, we wanted to optimize for cost. We wanted to be able to take advantage of things like reserved instances. So what was our strategy? Well, we had so many AWS services that we were using that EC2 was a no-brainer for us. 
We also wanted operational simplicity in that our developers do their own deployments and they manage the service, and we didn't want to have to have a separate ops team, and we also didn't want to change their workflow. We wanted to use Docker containers because they allow us to make deployments easier and to, and to get um, good resource utilization. And lastly, we wanted zero downtime deployments um, because we're deploying all, all day, every day. So we looked at a lot of options before deciding to build Empire on top of, EC2, on top of ECS. Here are some of the reasons. Well, we wanted it to be, a, ECS was a managed service, which meant we weren't going to have to build and maintain our own clustering service. And ECS integrated with ELB, which solved zero downtime, connection draining, and ultimately service discovery over DNS. It had the kind of failure modes that behaved the way we wanted them to. We could terminate the entire pool of machines, and once they were healthy, everything would come back up again using uh, auto-scaling. And AWS services evolve at a stable, at a fast but very stable pace, which is ideal for building a production-grade uh, platform. So today, Empire is an easy-to-run, self-hosted platform that's built as a thin layer on top of ECS. It's open source, and it implements a simple API, and we provide a CLI client. You can create applications, deploy them, scale them up or down, limit hardware constraints, and you can easily roll back. It's in production today at Remind. We have over 30 applications running on it on 36 container instances with over 240 containers. So this was a huge year for Remind again. This graph here behind me is showing our user growth, which is, which is pretty amazing. Um, it was also one of our smoothest back to school years ever, in part thanks to ECS. Um, Remember, 8,300 dropouts per day is a massive social problem, and there's still a lot of work to do here to fix that. While we're seeing, you know, the, while we're seeing big impact in classrooms around the world, we'd love to see more engineers help work on this problem with us. So please, help us to drive positive social change together. Thank you.